So at 18, I dropped out of computer science because I thought it was too hard. Uh, but now at 33, I'm learning to code all over again, but now on my own. And so in this video, I wanted to share my story as well as just why I'm doing this. I feel like there's uh, there can be a lot of shame with people wanting to switch careers in their 30s and even later in life. And uh, certainly there's an element of that with me, especially since I'm pursuing what I quit 15 years ago. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking of making a career switch in your 30s, hopefully this maybe inspires you to take that leap. But let's start with just my story first. Uh, so in undergrad, I started off as a computer science major and we started off learning Java. And as soon as we got to object-oriented programming, I it was really hard for me. And so I dropped out of computer science and I should preface this by saying that my overall work ethic at 18 years old was just garbage. I didn't have really any. Like most of my time in college was spent going out on weekends, getting drunk, and procrastinating with any and all of my schoolwork. I just didn't have really any motivation to do work. Um, but anyway, so I dropped out of computer science and I switched to health science because fitness was uh, something I was really interested in. And truthfully, I heard it was an easier major. And so I went with that and then I went along that path, eventually, essentially went to school for seven years to become a physical therapist. And so that was my profession and, and still is, actually. Um, so I realized that after five years of working as a physical therapist that it just wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And I mean, there's aspects of it that are good, but there's a lot of aspects of it that just aren't good at all. And I knew it was something that I didn't want to do long term. And so around that time, so this was probably maybe two years ago now, I decided I wanted to try to pivot into something else. And so I started looking up uh, tech careers that did not involve coding. And so that led me to try out UX design. And so I pursued that for probably a year and uh, I really liked it, but the thing that I didn't care for is that there was no avenue for me to really work on my own. Like typically UX designers always have to be working at, at, a, at a job. And one of my goals is to be able to work on my own at some point. So I kind of like transitioned into more web design. And so I started working with Webflow and getting really proficient with using that tool and by learning Webflow, I sort of got a basic understanding of HTML and CSS. And I found that I really liked that aspect of it. I liked the design aspect of, of figuring out how I want things to look and the layout and all that stuff. But I arguably almost liked even more the, the puzzle-like nature of how do I actually get this to work in, inside the web. Um, and that was, I don't know, it, it was rewarding to figure out using, using Webflow. And so for about a year, I worked exclusively on just trying to get better at Webflow. And by the way, like this whole point, I was also balancing my full-time job as a physical therapist. And so this was really tough because the my job as a PT was pretty draining. I mean, I'm talking with people all day. They're, they're, it's emotionally draining because, you know, a lot of them, most of them are in pain and all of that. And so when I got home, I had to somehow muster up enough willpower to be able to work on, at the time, UX design or, or, uh, or web flow design. And that got really difficult because I didn't want to do that when I got home. I just wanted to lounge around um, watch Netflix, maybe have a beer or play a game. And I think the only thing that really got me, the only thing that really allowed me to make it a habit of working on what I needed to work on is just having a strong why, like a, a strong enough anchor point for why I want to work on what, on why I want to work on what I need to work on to get to my goal. 
And so for me, I wanted to be able to, you know, have a job where I could work remotely and creatively and, and all of that. And so that was sort of my foundation for wanting to do it. Um, but I think if I was doing it solely for money, I think I would have probably quit this whole journey a long time ago. But the other thing that I had to figure out during this juggling of of uh, figuring out design and development was also time management. So figuring out how to, what do I actually need to work on and how am I going to block out time to work on everything that I need to work on. And, you know, I was not perfect at that when I started and I'm still not perfect at it, but I'm a lot better than when I started. And so I did that and I became what I would consider, consider to be quite good at using Webflow. And I, I became uh, proficient at using all of the native features within Webflow. And so at that point, I asked myself, well, where do I go from here? And how do I advance beyond this? Because I could, I could go more the design route and try to learn like really complex designs. And that is interesting. And it's still something I'm interested. But the thing that almost allured me a little bit more was how do I implement custom code and how do I implement more advanced functionality in my websites, which would inevitably require some form of custom code. And so that pretty much led me to starting to learn how to code and basically do what I tried to do at 18 years old, but now I'm doing it at 33 and I'm doing it on my own. And so um, things have changed now because I quit my job three months ago to really give this um, a full shot. I saved up six to eight months of living expenses. And now I've just been working on trying to still improve my design abilities within Webflow, but now working on coding. So I'm using Free Code Camp and I'm going through their curriculum and I'm working on the CSS and HTML chapters at the moment. And, you know, for the most part, it's, um, it's cool to go through. It kind of like in a weird way is reminded me of what I went through and, in, in uh, in undergrad a little bit, of course we jumped right into Java in undergrad. We weren't doing HTML and CSS. Um, but still, kind of like working on the basic coding projects and, and building upon that. Uh, some of it is a drag, like I'll be honest. But, you know, I think with coding, the beginning is, well, I don't have experience with this, but I feel like coding is probably hardest in the beginning because it's all new. And I know especially I've dabbled a little bit in JavaScript. That especially is quite difficult. Um but I think I'm coming into this with a much different mindset than I was at 18. So like I have, well, for one, just a lot more determination than I did at 18. And so like when I encounter challenges now, I want to solve them. I want to figure out a solution to them. It's not, I no longer look at a challenge and I'm like, oh, this is too hard. I'm going to quit. Uh, and I think that has been really helpful. And, you know, there's a piece of me that was like, damn, like, what if I had this willpower when I was 18? Like, where would I be now? Um, but I know it's not helpful to think like that. So I try to, when I have those thoughts, I just try to, uh, I, I try to push those away. Uh, the other thing that I have more now is, is just a lot more agency. I mean, I'll be honest, like for the first 28 to 30 years of my life, I don't really feel like I had a whole lot of agency. I was kind of going through life and I just felt like there was a inherent life script that I was following. And I just sort of did that. I did what people expected of me. I did what society expected of me. And I didn't really ask questions. I didn't, uh, I didn't, you know, question the status quo. I just sort of went through life. I mean, kind of on autopilot, to be honest. And then around 28 to 30 is when I started like actually questioning things. And that was when I was starting to get dissatisfied with my physical therapy career. And I started just saying like, what, 
what am I doing? What, what do I want to do here? And so I think having that agency is, uh, is very helpful. Um, and also just like my time management's better than it was when I was 18. Like I said, when I was 18, I was drinking all the time, procrastinating. Now I actually set out goals for the week, weekly goals, daily goals, things that I need to work on. And it's, it feels a lot better to be working from that proactive place versus a reactive place of, oh, I need to continuously play catch up. Um, so yeah, I think those tools have really helped me to better learn code and, and honestly, just like the whole design and uh, aspect in general. And so I think that'll really help carry me through when it comes to, to learning this and, and getting better at code. And like, I don't even really know what my end goal is. Um, like ultimately I want to be able to work on my own, right? Like that's my main goal. But if the right job comes along, I'm not going to poo-poo that, right? Like if there's a job and they want to hire me and I'm interested in, in working for them, then, you know, I think that'd be a good experience, especially if their culture is really good. They're, they're not one of those companies that, you know, expects you to work 80 hours a week or something ludicrous like that. Uh, I would be 100% open to that. So I'm trying to like, I do have a main goal of working for myself, but I'm also trying to be open-minded towards other opportunities as well. And I think that's kind of like a balanced place to be operating from. So yeah, um, I, I don't know what the future holds, but I am excited for it. And uh, no matter where you know life takes me from here, I I'm, am really glad that I'm pursuing this and chasing after what it is I'm interested in. Uh, you know, I, you know, interestingly enough, like people always say to chase your passion and I'm not so sure, sure that my passion is coding per se, but I do have an interest in it. And I find that the more that I dive into it, the more I enjoy it. And I think that that is a good enough sign, uh, that, that that is, what is happening. The fact that I continue to enjoy it when I work on it. And obviously it's frustrating too, right? I don't think there's any um, developer that is completely frustration free. Like when code doesn't work, it's fucking annoying, but it's also really rewarding to see when it does work. And so that is sort of motivation to um, keep me going. But yeah, um, if you're in a similar boat and you are thinking about trying to code in your thirties or even later, or you just want to, you're just, you kind of are done with whatever career you're doing and you want to make a switch. Um, I say, go for it. Right. I mean, you only get one life. And to me, one of the worst feelings in the world is regret, regret for things that I didn't do. I rarely regret things that I do. It's only the things that I don't do um, that I tend to regret, uh, or rather the regret is typically stronger for those kinds of things. And it's hard, like, right? Like uh, as, as you age, you have more responsibilities. And so taking these leaps of faith become a lot more difficult as you get older. Like um, I was juggling a job, like right now I'm not working my PT job, which is really nice because I can really go full steam ahead. But if I can't make this work, I'll have to get another job. Like there's things that I'll have that I have to think about. Right. And especially if you have a family and kids, um, I don't have those things, but very common. If you, if you do have those things, those are responsibilities. Those are things that keep you, that keep people from um, from going after goals such as these. However, uh, you know, I don't, I never think that there, no matter what your situation is, there's never really a perfect time to start anyway. So even if it's the case where you feel like you have a lot going on and you feel like it's just not a good time, I don't know. 
I would challenge that belief. I would really challenge it and, and ask yourself, could you set aside at least 20 minutes to work on something a day? You know, that I have found that for me with improving with my, my UX design, my web flow design, and, and ideally my coding as well, that it's really the little efforts compounded over time that make a huge difference. When I think about where I was with my skill set a year ago, I'm a totally different, I mean, pfft, I'm a totally different person. I mean, Jesus, like it's way different. Uh, and then two years ago, it was like, well, I didn't know shit about anything, anything that I'm doing now. So it's really wild. Like it, it does take a while, but those, seriously, those little pieces of effort, if you're consistent with them over a long period of time, it makes such a dramatic difference and, and you can achieve so much, even if you don't have a lot of time to spare, even if you can spare a little bit of time frequently, then it can make um, all the difference. So yeah, that's, um, that is my story. So I'm going to keep continuing this journey. <clears throat> and as I've been doing since the very beginning, I'll keep documenting my journey along the way, sharing everything I learned. But I hope that if you are someone that has been wanting to maybe do a career switch or, or maybe learn, maybe you want to learn coding in your thirties, forties, and you're just like, not sure if it's even worth undertaking at this point. Um, if you're interested in it, you should go for it. Why not? It's better to try than to not, in my opinion. And so I think I will leave the video at that. Subscribe if you found this to be helpful and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.